Hello guys, welcome back. This is Code Letica, and in this video, we are going to demonstrate how we can write a clean Kotlin code using the MVVM architecture. So without wasting much time, we are going straight to the project. So I've already created a dummy project that I want to use to demonstrate. In this project, we are going to consume an API. So I will click on the project to launch it. In. This is my project. First of all, let's look at the Gradle side. So I'll open the build for Gradle. Dependencies that we use. We have the navigation fragment. We have the retrofit, the retrofit converter JSON. Then the login. We also have the lifecycle view model. All right. Now let's look at our REST folder. Go into the navigation graph. So this is my nav graph, I have my splash fragments, I have the login fragments, I have the sign up fragments, the home fragments. Okay, so these are my layouts. When we go to the splash screen, so this will be our welcome screen when our application is run for the first time or when you launch the application, this is what you see. This is the login. All right. So now let's go straight to our. Okay. So this is the most important part I want to show you guys. So I've structured or I've grouped my code into three folders. We have the data, the domain, and the presentation. So this will be the end part at health 100 app. All right. So inside the data, we have the API. We have a folder that will contain our API. We have our DB. We have our model. We have our repository. Then I uh, util folder. So inside the API, that is where we have services. So we've created an interface where it will contain our API services. So here we have a login user, then a sign up that is register user, then get products. So these are the interface, our service class. That will be making a call. Now inside the DB, we have the converters, the flyby dial, and this database itself. Now let's look at the model. Inside the model, we have two folders. We have the model request and the model response. The model request, when you look at the login, so this is the request we are going to send to the API. Because when you look at the API service class, you see that for the login, it accepts a body. That is the login request. So that's what we've created here. So this is what we are going to send to the API. And when you send this to the API, you are going to get a login response. And that is this one. So this is the login response. All right. You also have user requests. This is what we are going to send to the API when you are creating a new user. And we are going to expect a user response as a return. All right. We also have a validation resource. That's what we use to do our validations. Okay. Now let's look at our repository. Inside the repository, we also have two folders. One is the data source, then the data source implementation. In the data source, we have the local data source and a remote data source. The remote data source will be for the API services. So when you click on it, this is what we've done. We have the login user, which expects a login request, then returns the login response. The same applies to the register user. That takes or accepts a user request, then gives or returns a user response. All right. The same thing. Now let's look at the data source implementation. For the remote, this is what we have. It extends from flyby data source. We'll go to this side. So this one to as a repass in the constructor, the API service class. Then this our login class. Then we return the API service dot login, which expects 
or accept a login. That is a login request model. So this is our drive-by remote data source implementation. This is just a class name. Now, when we go to the flyby repository information, this is what we are doing there. We have also created a function that is respond to user res re results. We also have response to string. Then we also have response to shop item results. Then here is response to shop results. Now, so when you are going to log in a user, it returns a response to string response so this is what we are going to use to return a message whether it's a success or a failure or we get some error all right also have a util class inside a util created a shared preference that we use to check if the user has signed in the user signs in successfully we generate a token for that user all right we also have a util class inside a util class you are going to do some validation to check whatever the user has entered, whether it's empty or it's not empty. Then also have validation. Whenever we are creating a user, we validate the input field. Then we have, now have a resource. the resources to check our success when the data is loading. Then also when we have error in our data fetching. We also have a net class that we use to check our internet connectivity. All right, then we have a constant. Now, I also have a folder called domain. Inside the domain folder, we also have two classes. We have the repository and the use case. But before we come to this side, let's go to the presentation. Inside the presentation, we have the dagger, that is a dependency ingestion. So here we've created the app node, depend a uh, dagger ingestion. And with the app model, we created a function to return the share preference. All right, also a stem from the share preference class that we've created or we created in the data util share preference. All right. Now also have the network mod. So inside this place, we've created our retrofit class where we are doing our login, HTTP login interceptor. We are also getting our, returning our retrofit builder. We also have the API services. Then we create a JSON builder. All right. We also have our data source model inside the data source. We also extend the flyby remote data source, which returns the flyby remote data source implementation. Now we have the repository model as well. We also have the network model. Okay, we are done with this one. So that's basically for the dependency ingestion. We created an addition for our adapters. So here we list all the adapters that we are going to use in our project. Okay. Now let's go to the repository. Inside the repository, we have one file there that is taking care of all the functions. We have our login user, our register user, and our other. Then now inside the use case, this is where we are going to write the functionalities to trigger whatever api calls we'll be making we have the auth use case inside the auth use case we have the login functionality we've created a function that will enable or allow us to log in a user here is it we also have a function to register a new user inside our auth use case you also have the product auth so in here we are creating a function to return all the products that we are fetching from the API based on the user's auth, the user's authentication. Because as we said, when a user logs in successfully, we generate a token. And that token is being passed whenever we are fetching a product. Okay. Now let's look at our view model. Inside the view model, we have login view model. Okay, and the login view model extends from the view model. So here you are passing in two constructors. That is the odds use case, then the share preference. Okay, so here is the function we are creating to call the odds use case login class. All right, so that is it. You also have the register view. 
that is it. Now, we have our adapter class. This adapter class to get the product. When the pro we receive the product, we bind it to the adapter. Then we show it in our view. Okay. So that is it basically. Now let's see, look at our screens. We have the welcome screen. So yeah, the splash screen. We also have the splash view model. All right. So here we've created one variable class to check whether there has been a token saved or whether the user has already signed in. Then we use the logged in class uh, variable, sorry, to check. So here we are saying if it's logged in, then we navigate the user straight to the home fragment. Otherwise, we take the user to the login screen. So, all right, there's the login. Check to see if it is successfully. We also observe to see if successful. And we navigate to the home. We navigate the user to the home. All right. If it fails, then we give a snap bar. All right. So this sign up. Anyway, this code, a link to this code will be given in the description. You can just use this code. To assist you structure your code if you are working for a company or as a freelancer you have to write a clean code you can use this code as a guide in writing your clean code all right so let's run our application to see how it looks like Rose running Odin. Was done. Yes, installing. Okay, it's done installing. Our lock cuts. Here's the code. Let me log in. And so fetching the product. Internet is bad, so all right. So this is basically our application in the MVV approach. As I said, link to this code will be given in the description. You can use it 
it's a guide special for the beginners who want to write a very clean code and use this approach thank you very much for your time and guys expect more videos more tutorials more guide more hints a lot i like to see you don't forget to subscribe to codelytica share the link and bring more people on board thank you for your time